one of the things that we found so far is that progesterone supplementation uh, uh, advanced in embryonic development and the embryo started to uh, interact with the uterus to uh, produce the, uh, the placenta early on. So in one of our studies, the risk for pregnancy loss in, ca- in lactating dairy cows is about 20% when the placenta development starts up until day 21, but increases to above uh, 65% when the initiation of the placental development is on day 22 on, or after that. And with our progesterone supplementation, we were able to shorten the period for placenta development. So we expect that with some, uh, some of these uh, strategies, we may be able to minimize some uh, pregnancy losses that are related at least to this uh, delayed uh, uh, initiation of placental development. Hello and welcome to the Dairy Black Belt Podcast. This is Mark Thomas from Dairy Health and and one of the hosts of the Black Belt Podcast. And today uh, we have the great opportunity to have Dr. Rafael Dominguez with us from The Ohio State University. Welcome, Rafael. Hey, hi, Mark. Uh, Thank you for the invitation. It's a good opportunity to talk about the research that uh, we've been working on. Excellent, and a great opportunity to meet you. Uh, was, wasn't familiar with, with your work, had an opportunity to review uh, a lot of your publications, et cetera, before the recording. Uh, so tell us a little bit about who you are, uh, you originally from uh, Brazil, and, and how you got to uh, US and The Ohio State University. Yeah, uh, I'm originally from Brazil. My family had uh, a small dairy and beef operations. Uh, we also had horses. So for me, it was kind of like an obvious choice to go to vet school. So I started vet school in Brazil, finished vet school over there, then moved to Wisconsin uh, to pursue research uh, interests. Uh, after a while over there, I joined the lab of Dr. Milo Wilbank for my uh, for my PhD, working along with Dr. Uh, Laura Hernandez as well. And after completing my PhD, I moved uh, to my position now at Ohio State University. Excellent. Excellent. And uh, within that position, I assume you have some teaching and some research responsibilities or mainly research? Yeah, that's right. Uh, I have 60 percent research position and 40 percent teaching. Wisenetics turns podcast airtime into brand authority. We don't sell ads. We elevate voices. Curious how far your voice can go to become a reference in the industry and attract more leads? Scan the QR code and discover how we can turn your expertise into unmatched brand authority. Let's transform expertise into influence, starting now. Excellent, excellent. So one of your uh, main areas of research is pregnancy loss. And I think for anyone listening, um, that's gonna pique their interest because um, as most people know, uh, you know, if you get semen in cow at the right time, Conception is is pretty darn high, right? It happens at a, at a very high rate. It's what happens between conception and us somehow, blood, milk, test, ultrasound, palpation, diagnose a pregnancy. And then after that, obviously, we have some losses. So give us some insight as to um, the work that you're doing. Yeah, so you're absolutely right on that. Fertilization is good. We uh, We can see high pregnancy rates. Uh, around day 16 in cows, for example, in our last study, we had 80% of the cows that were inseminated, they had an embryo on day 16. Um, however, we don't typically see that uh, at the farm because the first uh, pregnancy test, it's typically uh, on ultrasound around day 28 to 32. Um, however, by day 32, a lot of the pregnancy losses already took place so you had a high number of cows that were pregnant and lost the pregnancy by day 28. So in our study in Wisconsin, we had 35% of the cows losing the pregnancy between day 16 and day uh, 30 of gestation. Uh, and this co- corresponds to about 75% of the entire pr- of all the pregnancy losses that take over during the entire gestational period. So my research here at Ohio State is being focused on identifying uh, First, actually identifying the pregnancy loss and then trying to identify the causes that lead to pregnancy loss uh, in cattle. So very interesting. Obviously, most dairy producers and and industry folks would love to have 80 percent conception rate. We we would all be pretty darn happy. Um, So 
I think we got that in pretty well figured out. Obviously, there's optimal times for insemination, et cetera. What does some of your research indicate are the key factors that lead to those losses? And is there anything that we can actually do on a practical aspect to prevent some of those? So uh, one of the first things that we had to start working on was uh, the strategy or a methodology to uh, uh, identify the pregnancies or the pregnant cows on day 16. So to do that, we developed some new techniques on identifying uh, some specific genes that are related to the presence of the embryo. So with that, we are now able to identify these early events that happen uh, for pregnancy loss. So overall, we've been able to classify pregnancy loss based on two uh, events, either the embryo die itself, so we don't know exactly why yet, we are working on that. And the other side, it's when the cow uh, have regression of the corpus luteum. So the corpus luteum is in the ovaries, the organ that produces progesterone that is necessary for maintaining the pregnancy. So uh, for some reason that we are still working on, the, the corpus luteum regresses even when the embryo is in the uterus and even when the embryo somehow is still signal signaling to the cow that it is there. So uh, we are trying to understand now what regulates uh, the maternal response to some embryonic signals to maintain the corpus luteum. Uh, at the same time that we do that, we've been working on strategies to enhance embryonic development. And the idea is that if we can uh, make the embryo grow a little faster, more vigorous, uh, the embryo may uh, signal to the maternal system that it's there. We may be able to overcome some pregnancy losses related to that. So we've been working on progesterone supplementation that has been a lot of work on progesterone supplementation over the several uh, decades in the past uh, with confounding results. Uh, the way that we are looking at uh, supplementing progesterone, we have been, good, uh, have been having good results so far, at least on embryonic development. So it looked like we were able to uh, enhance embryonic development, they grow a little faster, uh, they start producing, interacting with the maternal system earlier. Uh, we have not uh, utilized this approach in a, a fertility trial, in a larger trial. Uh, that's something that we plan to do in the next uh, couple of years. But at least one of the things that we found so far is that progesterone supplementation uh, advanced in embryonic development and the embryo started to uh, interact with the uterus to uh, produce the, uh, the placenta early on. So in one of our studies, the risk for pregnancy loss in, cow, in lactating dairy cows is about 20% when the placenta development starts up until day 21, but increases to above uh, 65% when the initiation of the placenta development is on day 22 on, or after that. And with our progesterone supplementation, we were able to shorten the period for placenta development so we expect that with some uh, some of these uh, strategies, we may be able to minimize some uh, pregnancy losses that are related at least to this uh, delayed uh, uh, initiation of placental development. Very interesting. And Rafael, is this exogenous progesterone supplementation or uh, creating an accessory CL for endogenous production or a combination? We, uh, in our experiment, experiments over here, we supplemented progesterone utilizing the cedar. Uh, the advantage of using the cedar is that you have the increase in progesterone, uh, in the circulating progesterone in the cow almost instantly, uh, in contrary to using, uh, stimulating uh, an accessory CL that's going to take a couple of days until the CL is developed and that CL can actually produce progesterone. Okay. And is, is a cedar, uh, you know, there's been... <clears throat> Lots of people, quote, trying things like that, and there is some research, but is a single cedar that's sufficient progesterone in these cases? Yeah, at least uh, we could, were able to detect a, a significant increase in progesterone concentrations in the cows uh, right after putting the cedar. Um, and it's interesting because it, when you remove the cedar, uh, it's, it doesn't cause a drop in circulating progesterone because by the time you remove it, uh, it's already kind of the supplemented cows are already in a similar concentration compared to the, uh, the control cows that were not supplemented. So that's one of the advantages of using the cedar. You, 
and stimulate that early increase in progesterone, but we do not necessarily overload the cow with too much progesterone. Okay, and and what uh, what days are you are you are you placing those? So in our study, we placed the cedar on day three and removed on day twelve. Day twelve, okay. Yeah, so we are still by day twelve when we remove the cedar, the concentrations of progesterone in the cows are similar to the controls. So uh, there's not cause that dramatic uh, increase in progesterone compared to when you use um, uh, a, a accessory CL to supplement progesterone. So I would imagine then probably the next question for your team, you and your team is what cows need supplementation and what cows don't, correct? Because I guess we could put a cedar in every cow, but like it's pretty expensive, probably pretty cheap in com compared to a pregnancy loss. But um Identifying which cows really need it, I would imagine, correct? Yeah, that's uh, one of the things that we're looking into. So, for example, heifers probably don't need a, an accessory uh, CL or progesterone supplementation to have good pregnancy rates. Uh, but we believe that the premium pairs and maybe the multi-pairs multi uh, cows will uh, benefit from that supplementation. Excellent, excellent. So, <clears throat> really interesting and relevant research. Uh, Rafael, um, I, I thank you for joining us today and giving some of your insights and, and looking forward to um, more results from your team, your lab, and uh, the practical application um, in this regard. Yeah, thank you. Thank you again for uh, the invitation and for the opportunity to talk to, uh, to the viewers. For all of our listeners and viewers, thanks for connecting. And uh, Dr. Rafael Dominguez, uh, thanks for joining us today.